<laughs> I don't know how to start it. I'll start it. Remember to look at the... Oh yeah. I never look at myself other than when you're here because I'm checking where you are. <laughs> you don't trust me to stay in frame, you think I'll do this randomly. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest with me here. The most special of guests. The most special say. of guests. This is my husband. Partner, life partner. <laughs> husband, Cameron. That is me. Last time we filmed together, he was a mere fiance. Ah, we upgraded. We upgraded. Today's video is going to be the second in my end of the year, best of the year, worst of the year type mm. videos. This one being all about... Sorry. <laughs> Did I just... You don't trust me to stay in frame, just think I'll do this randomly. <laughs> This one being all about Cameron's favourite books of the year. All two of the books that I read. Yeah, why don't you tell the people about your reading year? Yeah, not a good one, people. I didn't read much, comparative to normal. For those of you who haven't seen Cameron before, because there are a lot of new subscribers so since you were here last Ah, uh, they've all gone back and found me, don't worry. They were all like, hello, who's this man? <laughs> <laughs> not even the people that do know me probably don't recognise me. Look so, so different. I'm the same person. She didn't break up with her fiance. I just had to shave. Married bearded. Now she's stuck with the moustached man. Cameron has recently got a job as a firefighter, hence mm. the the lack of beard, which yeah. we are um not used to. Getting used to. It's weird, but here it is. And if my job goes well, here it'll be to stay. So Cameron does like to read. I'd say you mostly like to read literary fiction and fantasy. Uh, and non-fiction, but we never really count that. You never put it as your favourite. <laughs> it doesn't even occur to me that it's an option, honestly. Mm -hmm. I've never once even considered that it could be. Yeah, so where we tend to cross over the most is with literary fiction. Yeah. But then while I tend to be off reading a classic or poetry, you tend to be stuck into a fat fantasy novel or some non-fiction. Yeah. We actually cross over on most of the fantasy on my list. Yeah, I just don't read as much of it. <laughs> I think lockdown basically made people go one of two ways. I read fucking tons this year. I read more than yeah. I've ever read before in a year, I think. I just didn't read as much. It just didn't feel like I was in the headspace for reading. Didn't happen. That being said, you do still have a few good favourites. How many favourites are you going to talk about? Um, five? But then a couple of honourable mentions as well. And are you going to talk about them in any particular order? No, I have no order. No? No. Should I? No. I haven't ordered them at all. It's even... up to you. Okay. Shall we They're begin? All good. Sure. In the same vein as um, me having not read, actually, all of these were read earlier in the year, like quite a lot earlier in the year. Don't recall any of them very well. This so... is exactly what you said <laughs> in last year's video. Anyway. That's okay. Book one. Exciting times. Jasmine hasn't read it. She should. Hang on. Exciting times. Um, it is... Bye. Bye. Ooh, don't want to try that. We've had this conversation before. Nisha. Nisha? You sure? Hmm? Not convinced. By Nisha Dolan, apparently. Yep, yeah, it's absolutely banging. Thank you. Yeah, you take that. It matches your outfit. <laughs> this one is a bit of a weird one for me in that I struggle to articulate why I like it. Normally when I like a book it's because I'm really emotionally invested and I care about the characters. Hmm? You've not said what type of book it is or what it's about. Oh it's a literary fiction and it's about three people living in Hong Kong. Perfect. Mostly one person living in Hong Kong and then two people that come into that person's life. You were saying that oh, you yes. don't know why you liked it. Normally like I care about the characters in books like emotionally I'm quite invested and that's why I end up caring. This one I didn't actually really give a shit about the people or like what happened to them. I didn't find them particularly likeable people, but I still wanted to know. Like I didn't care if it was going to be good or bad, but I wanted to know what happened. I found them very convincing people and very different from me. I think that probably intrigued me. I bought into them as people. They just made very different choices than I would make. Massive, massive, like cannot state enough conversations with friends vibes from this one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she's an Irish writer as well. She is. Very similar, like writing style. Similar with conversations with friends, actually I didn't really like the characters, but I was super drawn into the book. And like the witty back and forth, like just kind of like carries you along and you don't even realise and then you've like finished it. Yeah, it's interesting because I actually literally just read conversations with friends for the first mm. time. We both love normal people more. Yeah, same. Yeah. Like, I didn't really like her characters, but... But you like, compelled The writing and the somehow. dialogue's yeah. good. Uh, it's also from a Irish person's perspective. And obviously, Irish and British history is very 
interlinked. And one of the characters that they mingle with quite a lot is an Englishman. The Irish character dissects certain things about British society and class and stuff like that, which I found really interesting to see from like an outside perspective. I can't remember much of what <laughs> was dissected because I read it so long ago, but I remember reading it and being like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, and as Cameron rather passively aggressively said earlier, I have yet to read this. Once again, <laughs> it's a bug that Cameron's been recommending me to read. Yeah. And I will read it soon. I actually think I'm going to read it this year. And in your video last year, you were saying the same thing about Milkman, which I then did read. Yep. Didn't make it into your favourites though, did it? Not quite. Next. Absolute banger. This is a lovely book by Natalie Haynes. It's A Thousand Ships and it is a retelling of the Iliad. Not just the Iliad, also the plays surrounding the Iliad. The tale that people think is the Iliad is actually like a bunch of other plays as well and this kind of brings a bunch of those in which is really cool. It's from women's perspective throughout the tale unlike Silence of the Girls which I think was marketed rather poorly and was only half from a woman's perspective. This is actually from women's perspectives. I absolutely fucking love this book. I don't think you would. I don't think you will for example as much if you don't know the story of the Iliad quite well already. It kind of expects you to know what's going on a little bit. It kind of expects you to know who certain people are. It doesn't fill in the main tale of the Iliad like you have to know what's what happened. Cameron has read the Iliad and you just like those kind of like stories. Oh, I love the tellings of it as well. You're yeah. way more familiar with them than I am, so um this isn't my kind of thing. Funnily enough, actually, Natalie Haynes' newest book, Pandora's Jar, that just came out. So excited. Which I got you for Christmas. <laughs> I'm actually way more interested in that one because that's yeah. actually just about women in Greek myths. So I feel like that would be more interesting to me rather than this one which relies on prior knowledge. So Part of what I really liked about this is that it doesn't follow the main tale. I think that's really fascinating for a book to not just hone in on the main storyline. It focuses on like the fringes of the story and like the bits before and the bit afterward and the side characters that you kind of see come in and it fills in the story from different angles and different views. When you read a book and you're like, especially a fantasy book, and you're like, oh, but what's going on in the rest of the world at that time? What are the other people thinking when I get one person's perspective? This book does that from all the women's perspectives and that's just absolutely fascinating. The kick at the moment, um, it's a really good kick, of women's perspectives in history and you see the aftermath of kind of once the men have done fighting, uh, the women dealing with the trauma of the men or being slaves to the men or you know all the other shit that kind of went along with a um, ancient Greek war. I love how happy you get when you talk about books you like. Honestly, your face proper lights up. I like books. Speaking of my love of ancient Greek retellings. I don't know if you read that, but it says Song of Achilles. Jazz wanted me to read this. I said I was going to read Song of Achilles. She went and brought this down and handed it to me and said, here you go, read this. It's Song of Achilles. Much fun was had and I refused to let her take this little piece of paper off now because I really enjoy it. This book is excellent. Superb fucking book. What is Top it? tier. Just hasn't broken into my like favourites ever, but it's like it's it's on the cusp, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It is Ask Again Yes by you know who they are. Mary Beth Keen. Thank you. It is a family focused literary fiction generational type thing. I mean that's what's excellent about it. You see the relationships between all the like two families following through and the relationship between all the people and how the different generations deal with trauma and deal with certain things that happen in everybody's lives which just happen in some people's lives and you see how different generations respond the same or differently and seeing that kind of juxtaposition or similarity is what makes this like really fascinating. It's, it's quite plot focused for a literary fiction like there's like actual events like really mm -hmm. significant events that happen you really want to see what's going to happen next with certain people um, in a more plot focused way than like yeah. characters just milling around going through day-to-day -day life. That's really cool, I really enjoyed that um, part of it. It's probably worth noting that this is set in America by the way from the 1970s to modern day, just to give a bit of context. You're saying I don't give enough context? I'm saying you don't give enough context. Yeah, that's probably fair, yeah. So this is the first book on this list that I have read. It was really? one of yeah. It was also one of my favourite books of last year, hence I got Cameron to read it this year during yes. lockdown. And it was, for, yeah, excellent. I think also probably a really nice introduction into like something a bit more literary. A lot more readable than some of the other stuff, which I think we tend to recommend. And like literary, flowery, ridiculous writing that's kind of beautiful but also difficult to get your head around sometimes. Mm. This is more straightforward. Next! City Brass. 
But it's actually the whole trilogy, kind of. I'm allowed to do that, right? Another one which I read and loved and recommended to Cameron. So I would have read this last year, but uh, I know what I'm like when it comes to fantasy series, and I would have been very upset <laughs> waiting for the third one. So I just waited until all three of them were out and then yeah. burned through them. And then we actually ended up getting into a <laughs> bit of a bit of difficulty, didn't we? We were both on the third book at the same time. We had one copy and yeah, it made was, for a very odd few days. There was some tension, there was some arguments. <laughs> it's your turn, no, oh no, it's not your turn. Neither <laughs> of us were saying that. I read all three of these, what, inside like a week? They're mm. very Moorish. Okay. I'm, I'm quite like that with books in general. When I start something, I tend to like, kind of burn through until it's done pretty quickly. But for these, it was even more so. Like they are very, you want to know what's going on, you want to get to the end. Do you Ex want uh, oh, sorry, yeah, you do that bit, you do that bit. So it's a, uh high fantasy trilogy yeah definitely yeah high fun yeah it's not set in a completely different magical world yeah but the rest of the world doesn't have any impact really it is set in an alternate 18th century middle east it follows primarily a young woman named nari yep. who is a con woman and then she accidentally summons a jinn warrior whoa, whoa. happens in the first fucking chapter <laughs> not a spoiler. <laughs> Is a spoiler if you don't know. <laughs> and she goes to the magical kingdom of David Bad. That's it. That's it. That'll do. There's a few kind of, um, I think factions makes it sound a bit more simplistic than it is, but there's kind of a few factions in the book and they're really convincing. That's part of what's excellent about it. You see all three factions and the main players that we follow in those mm. factions and you really buy into all their reasons and their justifications for feeling the way they feel and acting the way they act and responding to events very differently and it doesn't feel like oh they're doing that because the plot says they have to it genuinely feels like no i totally buy into why person x would do that mm. yeah, given yeah. their history and their faction and their beliefs and that's really nice in a fantasy book <laughs> yeah you follow three really great central characters yeah and just the whole world's just great this is my favorite fantasy series of all time now i absolutely love it the third book will be in my favorite books of the year video it's quite unique um, in where it's set Yes, that's nice, that's cool. Different from like a lot of medieval fantasy. The main thing that makes this excellent for me though is you read a lot of fantasy that's like, oh, I've read a lot of fantasy that in my opinion is good for the first like two books and then basically gets shit uh, or the ending's always worse and you can always tell that they've like thought through the start way more than they thought through the end. This one I think genuinely stayed like really strong throughout and that is exceedingly rare. It felt like it swelled. The scope widened, but to a perfect level. We were yeah, worried, we were worried the scope overly, would get too big and you'd kind of which lose. Which happens in so much fantasy. It rose to a perfect peak for me at the end. One of the best, like, managing to maintain its strength throughout for a fantasy book that I've read in, like, a while. That's it. Yeah. Next book. This is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. I literally read this one in, like, January, last January, so... I remember so little, but I remember really liking it, like mm. really liking it, like finishing it, going back to read certain chapters in it again because they were just beautifully written, gorgeous What chapters. is it, Cameron? Oh, that bit. You do that bit. <laughs> so this is a historical literary fiction novel. It tells the story of a young man named John Cole who flees Ireland and the Great Famine. He goes to America, he meets another person. Yeah. And then... They sign up to the US Cavalry and end up fighting in the Civil War. They sign up to the military and things happen. And they meet a third character and it's very interesting. And wow. good. Character meets character. <laughs> Plot. Interesting. <laughs> book. So you know we were saying earlier, Ask Again Yes is like literary fiction and brilliant, but it's accessible and it's not yeah. wanky. <laughs> This one's not accessible. <laughs> this I, is the wanky literary fiction. I don't know if it's book. wanky. Oh. Some of them are wanky and you're like, you're doing that unnecessarily. Oh no, he, But I, I still like it. This one I doing. feel like it totally, like it fits, it's yeah. necessary. It really takes you back. You really feel like you're in this setting. And the whole construction of every sentence and the way, like even the format of the whole book, like stylistically it's quite weird the way it's written. And it's just so of that time, it really helps mm. transport you. But it did make it quite hard for me to get into it for a little while. Definitely a teething process at the start. Yeah, so it's kind of told through a stream of consciousness style from the protagonist's perspective. And the and it's voice written... is super strong, like very colloquial. Yeah, it's very colloquial. So yeah, it's, it's a bit odd at the beginning. It took me a while to get into it. But once you do, it's 
so absorbing. Immersive. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you excellent. got that word there. <laughs> it's also gorgeous. Like the writing is also excellent. It's not just like it helps construct the setting. It does that, and it's really, really good at doing that. Mm. But it's also beautiful and poignant. Some sentences just describing like the heat or the cold are just beautiful. They're just excellently written sentences. Mm. And then obviously, yeah, the themes it explores are really interesting and explored through the lens of the character and the time it dis dissects gender to some extent in there but it's not like here's a modern version of dissection of gender that i'm going to chuck in a mm. what 1800s it really explores it through the time frame and the character mm. and feels very plausible that those characters would be going through that and conceiving it, it in organic, this way yeah. it feels very very organic yeah. yes nice I was just going to say that it is a pretty heavy book though, like do know that it explores oh, things yes. like war, obviously, and grief, and yeah. it's quite grim yeah. in places. So I would say like the main topics that it covers are like love and relationships, family. family relationships, and trauma. And trauma is not to be understated in those three. It covers that, and it covers how that affects the other two to a large extent. That's Sebastian Barry, it's a cheery cheery man. Right, it's cheery cheery books. The second part of this came out last year or something. It was like a companion. Yeah, I think novel. it's coming out next year, right? Nah, I think it's out. It's okay. out. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's Why haven't we bought it then? <sighs> Didn't get sent it. It's expensive. <laughs> now for the honourable mentions. Honourable mentions, of which there are. Oh, better go in the middle. We don't want three yellows. <sighs> Two fantasy, one literary fiction, all banging. I haven't actually finished this one, so I won't say a huge amount about it yet. But um, I can already tell that it's going to be like absolutely, I'm like halfway through. It's going to be absolutely excellent. It's one of your favourite books of the year. Sneak peek at your list. This um, is a proof copy, by the way, of Shuggy Bane. That's why it looks a bit different. Oh yeah, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. It's just Everyone superb. knows it's superb. Wonder yeah. Booker. Poppy War. Also won't say a ton about because I kind of don't consider it finished and I'm nervous about reading the third book. So I've read the first and the second. Haven't read the third yet. I got it for Christmas. Woo. You are so on it, everyone in Booktube is reading this book at the moment. I haven't even read it. It's really good. Like, I really, really like the first and the second one, but I'm nervous to say that it's superb because if the third one is really shit, it kind of like backtracks and ruins the other two for me. But through. it's fantasy set in... Fantasy set in like... Well, it's part of what's excellent about this. This is what happens when you hold the book. Look at that. <laughs> it's set in like alternate timeline China like ancient China. I know very little about Chinese history, but my understanding is that it, fo it kind of starts following a real timeline of events and then magic is involved and timelines kind of diverge from the regular. But I think that's part of what it makes it excellent. It makes it feel like a really well-grounded book. Yeah, you and she, really she feel knows like a lot about Chinese yeah, history. I, yeah, she, I think she did like history PhD or some shit. Mm -hmm. I googled it. Magic also kind of feels plausible. Not that what happens is plausible, but that this, the baseline for the magic, like, involving like shamanism and psychedelics and stuff that feels like a really cool way to incorporate like a plausible way to incorporate magic into a fantasy book to me it's only an honorable mention enough um last word on that one mm. really gritty really grim and i am so here for that give me some fantasy where people actually have horrible shit happen to them mm. like happened in medieval times just because there's magic doesn't mean everybody gets happy ever after Right. Doesn't mean everything's fine. People still took slaves. That's grim. It's like, no, that's fucking horrendous. Let's write about that and then give the slaves magic. Then let's see what happens. Um, another fantasy. Prairie of the Orange Tree. That's what Jasmine is reading right now. I've just started it. I'm very confused and <laughs> very excited. It's a standalone fantasy. I mean, it is pretty hefty. Massive. But it is also standalone fantasy, and that is a bit of a rarity and really nice. Oh, the thing that's really cool about this one... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the thing that's really cool about this one, and really, really enjoyable, is that in it, the two main characters you follow that are women are, like, just fucking straight-up badasses. Even in the David Brad trilogy, like, the woman's a badass, but she's, like, a woman badass, in that she's, like, really good at healing, and, like, really clever and, like, brave and bold. They're just fucking straight up, like, these two women will kick the shit out of all the men in this. Like, they just could. They're fucking hard as nails, and mm. it's just really refreshing to read from a woman's perspective, but someone that doesn't have to, like, worry about men being able to beat them in a fight. Mm. And for those of you who are interested, this is quite well known as being a feminist fantasy book, but also yeah. a... Hey, spoilers. Satic Spoil fantasy spoilers. book. So if you're interested in sapphic relationships, then this is one that everyone's talking about. We're done. That's it. Those are my books. Those were Cameron's favourite books of the year. We hope you enjoyed 
hearing him chat about them. Obviously let us know if you've read any of them down below in the comments. We always like reading the comments. If you have any book recommendations for Cameron, then leave them down below if you think there's anything he would like. But please don't spoil the books. And when I say that, I mean tell me like next to nothing about them. I yeah. Am a very pedantic man when it comes to spoilers. Sensitive man. I will be coming at you with my worst books of 2020 soon, followed by my best books of 2020, which is what everyone's waiting for, let's be honest. I don't think anybody was clamouring for this <laughs> one. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Bye. Had uh... I think that's goodbye Norwegian, <laughs> might not be. We've been learning Norwegian. <laughs> Tuva, comment down below. Yeah. Am I close? Am I anywhere near? Alright, bye guys. See you soon. I'm not slouching. You're slouching. No, I'm not. Literally not. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know how to just like come in and out. You've got to like, you've got to feed me into this. Like you're a host on a talk show, you know? Reel me in like I'm a fish. You're not going in? No. You're going to cut it out? You. Not oh, me. what me saying that? <laughs> I thought you were talking about cutting out something you said. <laughs> I know you did. Not what I said. Mm, nope. Thumbnail away. Oh Jesus, I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> I'm the mastermind behind all of her outfits. It's all, all from up here. Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana. With the greasy black peel. <laughs> With the greasy black peel. Can you move forward so your head doesn't look like a pea? No, <laughs> just your head. I'm going to sneeze. Pineapples. Oh. We're losing Sebastian. <laughs> Tell the people not to be rude about the tash in the comments because I'll cry.